Hello. In this video I will show you how to implement your own car inside mobile traffic system. For this I will use the Gridlock City Traffic Vehicle Pack. It is a professional made car package from the Asset Store. I will put the link in the description if you want to take a look. It contains a mixed collection of low poly cars and trucks with 3 LODs per model. All the models have individual light signals and wheels that are under 300 triangles, therefore can be dynamically batched. The pack contains two different material styles for every car, clean and rusted, with all the corresponding texture for a PBR workflow. They wave two materials, one for the paint, so it is very easy to change the color, and one for the other elements. This package is very easy to integrate inside traffic system. For this tutorial I will use the sports car. Let's take a look on how this car is constructed, especially I want to highlight the wheels. This car has all the pivots in the center of the wheel. For the mobile traffic system the pivot should be at the bottom of the wheel. To easily move it there, remove the graphic from it, set the game object to zero on Y axis and put the graphics back on. I will do this for all the wheels. This is required because the traffic system uses the first wheel pivot to determine the dimension of your wheel. This is also useful if you want to scale your wheels because it will scale them from the ground up and if you have multiple wheels for your car with different scale factor, it will speed up your work. Let's continue with the wheel structure. The first pivot should be at bottom, the next pivot should be in the center at 0, 0 on X and Z axis and on Y axis it should be positioned at the proper height. So you should put your wheel in place using the first pivot and you should set the wheel height using the second pivot. This is important because all the rotation and steering of the wheel is done using the second pivot. The third is the graphic. You can put inside it anything you want. If your wheels are not both sided, you can rotate them by 180 degrees to look good on the left and on the right side. For the body there are no special requirements. And if you need lights on your car, you need a game object that contains your lights that can be enabled or disabled automatically based on the state of the lights. The interior of the object is not important, it can contain any number of other objects. The name of the parent object is important, only if you want those objects to be automatically assigned on the vehicle component. Now let's add the vehicle component. It needs to be on the top of your car prefab. Set the mass to a real life value. And then all you have to do is press the configure car button. The script will automatically say what is wrong with your car. Now it says that the game object car holder was not found, so let's make one. This game object is required for proper car turning. Create an empty game object, name it car holder, place it at zero and put all your other game object inside it. Now generate the vehicle again. It says that there are no colliders on the car, so let's add a collider. I like my colliders to be separated, so I will create an empty game object and inside it I will create a box collider. I will set the collider dimensions using the orthographic mode.
Now, with the collider in place, let's press configure car again. And as you can see, no errors occurred, so the car should work properly. I will explain a bit what all those settings are useful. The car needs to have a rigid body. The car holder is the top object we've just created. The front trigger is created automatically and it is used to detect obstacles. The shadow holder is used if you do not have a directional light for your traffic cars. You can create a shadow as a separate game object and assign it here. You can choose what type of vehicle the current vehicle is. If you remember, we created them on a previous video. All categories from that window will appear in this field. You have the wheels, which are automatically assigned if they are placed inside the game object called wheels. And if the name contains front or back or rear, the wheel position will be automatically assigned as well. The front wheels will steer and the back wheels will not. The radius, circumference and max suspension are computed automatically from the mesh, but you can adjust them manually if you want. If the max suspension is zero, the suspension from the wheel setup will be used, otherwise the suspension from the max suspension will be used for all wheels. The suspension position of 0.5 means that the wheel should stay in the center of the suspension length. 1 is at top and 0 is at bottom. The max steer is the maximum angle a car wheel can steer. You can check and see what is the proper value for your car. The minimum possible speed and the maximum possible speed are used to determine the maximum car speed. The speed is determined randomly between these two values and this gives a more realistic feeling to your traffic. If you want your car to have exactly that speed, make the two values equal. The acceleration time is the time that it takes to reach from zero to maximum speed in seconds. For this car to reach from 0 to 90, it will take 10 seconds. And in this case, it will take 3 seconds to reach from 0 to 40. The brake time is the same like acceleration time. It is the time that it will take to stop from the maximum speed. The automatically computed values are used for car interactions and another computations at runtime, and you should not change them. The safe distance is the free distance needed to change a lane. The overtake distance is the free distance needed to overtake. And the others are your car properties computed from your model. The package comes with another two components. The lights component that contains references to your light object that will be automatically switched on and off based on what your car is doing. If you hit configure car and your lights are named like this, they will be automatically assigned. Otherwise, you will have to assign them manually. Another component is the engine sound component. This will automatically add an audio source to your car and you have a couple of settings that allows you to customize how your car sounds at different speeds. It uses pitch and volume to make your engine loop sound to sound like it is accelerating or braking. The minimum values will be used when your car is stationary and the maximum values will be used when your car is at maximum speed. Now, let's test this car. To test, go to your car pool and add your newly created car on it. Hit play and as you can see the cars are working normally. And also the lights. In this way you can set as many cars as you want that work with the mobile traffic system.
Thank you for watching and don't forget you can ask me questions in the comments section or by email.